The housing situation is pretty dark right now. If you can find somewhere you'd like to live, getting together a deposit and finding a mortgage lender who's willing to help out can be nightmarish. Well, now throw into the mix someone who's willing to prey on your desperation and encourage you to commit what might be fraud in order to make it happen. The good news is we've met the family before a long, long time ago. Hang on. No, stop. Look, I love Star Wars more than anyone, but I'm reaching the end of my tether with it for this simple reason. Nobody really dies. Not properly. Obi-Wan Kenobi, he dies, and then he comes back. Darth Vader dies, and then he comes back. Yoda, he dies and comes back. Han Solo dies, and they make another complete film about him. I say this, if you're gonna go, go properly, and don't come back. Apropos nothing, do you guys remember Brendan Kiley? Yeah? Well, he was the Manchester-based landlord we featured on Rogue Traders in April 2012. And you know what? It seems he hasn't gone away either. This was his house back then. Absolutely huge. And inside, ooh, coloured lights and everything. He invited me round to explain why his lettings agent rented out homes that were nothing like this. In fact, they were damp, dirty and poorly maintained. But Brendan Kiley was certain he wasn't the one to blame. If someone is that desperate, they move into a damp property, I'm sorry, but their standards are not that great. They, they would love to live somewhere like I this. I cannot be responsible. Well, they would love to sit on this work a bit harder then, won't they? That, my friends, along with dogs driving cars and the Olympics, was 2012, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And much has happened since then. Come on, you lot. Go on, off you go. Just like Star Wars, this is a story involving a father and son relationship. Brendan Kiley has apparently passed the property baton onto his son, Harrison, perhaps named after Harrison Ford. I don't know. And Harrison has built up quite a business empire. He's the director of no fewer than eight companies, one being called Berkshire Homes Northern Limited. They built new houses all over the north of England. Well, they did until they went into administration. But another of Harrison Kiley's companies, BAK Contracts, notice his dad Brendan's initials there, have taken over the build and houses keep popping up all over the place. Harrison then sells on these houses through another brand called Global New Homes. Phew, I need to lie down. Unfortunately, the reports we've been getting about Berkshire Homes, or whatever they're calling themselves these days, don't make good reading. Reading. Come on. Yes, Berkshire is the name, but in reality, they do all their building up north. That's where Oliver Shillito met them when he bought a brand new three bedroom house from Harrison Kiley in 2017. Tell me what those two years have been like for you in the family. In a word, horrendous. Um... It's just been one problem after another. I've had so far three separate bricks fall out of the house and the mortar is literally falling out between the bricks. The kitchen started to fall apart, the extractor fan blew off the wall, the stairs feel like they're coming away from the walls. The floors are completely and utterly uneven. When you buy a house that costs £170,000, you expect £170,000 of house. And that's just not what we've got here. How is it trying to get Berkshire Homes back to fix the problems? Absolutely infuriating. But when they have come, they've just made the problem worse. Oliver's been told that the quality of his home is a reason why it's dropped a disastrous £70,000 in value in the 20 months since he's owned it. That's left him trapped in a property in negative equity. Home ownership should be a thing you enjoy. It should be a, a castle, a place of safety, a place of joy, and this house just is misery. It upsets me to have to pay for something that causes me this much stress. Oliver is far from being Harrison Kiley's only fed-up customer. We've spoken to a bunch of other people who've all bought houses from him with significant snags. So many, in fact, I sometimes need help remembering them. Including a staircase that wasn't installed properly. Yeah. Uh, oh, the oven that wasn't screwed in. There was a washing machine door that was hanging off. There was... Kitchen. Wonky kitchen cupboards, thank you. 
Oh. Holes in the walls, missing plug sockets, there was the wrong tiling fitted. Locks. There were no locks on the doors, and the list goes on. That's probably enough for now. Didn't I do well? It is bad. We need some expertise. Enter Surveyor Extraordinaire Barry Cross, who, paradoxically and despite his surname, is hard to anger. Hello, how are you? But what will he think of Harrison's houses? While Barry is performing what we call a cross-check, let me bring you up to speed on a bit of background detail. Harrison Kiley's developments have been plagued with problems. They've been issued with stop orders from local planning departments. They've been told some developments are not compliant with building regulations. We've heard from one development where boilers from a whole row of houses were condemned as unsafe. And another, which is still missing an access road four years on. But please don't say anything about this to Barry. I need him to stay objective. So this one is between you and me, all right? Barry Cross, as I live and breathe. How are you, Matt? You've had a look at these buildings. Yes. What do you make of them? The brickwork has been poor. It's uneven in places. The pointing has holes in it, so that when water gets in, it will freeze in the winter and make those holes much worse. There's water pouring out of the weep holes. That's a really bad symptom of something much worse. The soakaway has been placed far too near the house and doesn't comply with building regulations. Inside, finishings are poor. The floors are uneven. So many different problems that really need to be put right by the builder. What does it indicate about the people who built them? In two words, sloppy workmanship. But this is only half the story, because we haven't gone undercover yet. And when we do, we'll blow the roof off. Well, if you think this story is just about bricks and mortar, then you haven't watched quite as much as you ought to. There's a whiff of mortgage fraud in the air, and if you do what Harrison Kiley's company suggests, you could end up with a stinker of a problem. Now, when we first started investigating Harrison, it was clear that in him we had discovered a dodgy house builder, but the shonky nature of his building work is just the beginning of the story. Let me tell you a little bit about how mortgages work. No. Don't go anywhere. It's not dull. Look, there are fireworks. Ooh. You see, when you get a mortgage from the bank to buy a house, you have to pay a certain percentage of the cost of it yourself in the form of a deposit. Here's the important thing. The banks need to know exactly where that money's come from. Is it yours or did somebody else give it to you? In fact, there's a place on the mortgage application form where you have to declare exactly that. If you lie, you could be committing fraud. Now, let's take that piece of information and let's put it in an airtight box for later use, because it could be important. I have a feeling it will be important. We've been speaking to some of Harrison's buyers who think they might have inadvertently been led to commit fraud by him and his staff. Steve, not his real name or voice, is one of them. He wanted to buy one of Harrison's new builds as part of the government's help to buy scheme, but he couldn't afford the deposit, which was when Harrison's team offered him an unusual incentive. The developer said that they would pay the percentage up front for us as a sweetener for the deal. So they said they would put in your share of the deposit and that would help get the help to buy deal through? Yes, that's correct. A developer giving you cash for your deposit, sometimes called a builder's deposit, is legitimate. But Steve says what he was being offered had a twist. He says he was told not to tell anyone involved in the mortgage process that the money was coming from Harrison's company. Instead, Steve says he was told to explain it was a gift from his family. Harrison's explanation behind that was sometimes the help to buy scheme take a dim view on developers paying the deposits. They like it to come from the customer. This immediately struck me as being dodgy. I asked him about this. His response to that was, oh, yeah, it's perfectly fine. That's the way we always do it. It's just got to look as if it's come from your dad, that's all. But we'll pay for it, no problem. First time buyer Steve felt he was too far down the track to back out. But might Harrison's companies really be leading people into unknowingly committing mortgage fraud? It's time we took a closer look. 
Abby and Nick are posing as a happy couple. They are keen to view one of Harrison's properties, a four-bedroom house in Berry that costs £170,000. They've arranged to meet one of Harrison's sales agents. Sure. And this place is ticking all the right boxes. But how to pay for the all-important cash deposit of £8,000? Can the family give you any money? Oh, it's my dad, so how much would we need to make it up? So it if it's eight, we need. Half? We probably need four and a half, yeah, yeah. five. Yeah. yeah, you can do a builder's deposit. A builder's deposit. Now, remember, they can be legitimate. But we're then given a seemingly helpful offer, similar to the one that Steve got. Our sales rep suggests we borrow the money for the deposit from Abby's dad. Then they, the developer, will give it back later. What assurance can we give to her dad that he's going to get the money back? You would have on the reservation form that we, you're going to get a cash back yeah. completion. And then things get murkier, because the sales rep doesn't seem keen on us telling our mortgage lender about this generous cash gift. Right, so you want to say the nationwide that you're short on a deposit, Yeah. you're going to be gifted it by family, Yeah. and that's it. You haven't got to say we're giving it to you or anything like that. So, let's get this straight. First, we are being asked to borrow £5,000 from our dad. We will use this to pay our deposit, giving it to the bank. But then the builder, in this case Harrison and his companies, will give us that £5,000 right back. But we shouldn't tell the bank about the last bit? Yeah, definitely doesn't sound legit. But back in the office, we're told it's perfectly OK to lie to the lender about who's given us our deposit. It's not fraud, OK? You just say it's a gift, because it is a gift. Because okay. a gift means you don't give it back. Yeah, but he is getting it back from you. Yes. Huh? Because I've had this with somebody else the other day, and it just happened to say to the solicitor, oh, yeah, it's, it, we're, we're being, like, lent it, and it's sort of like, it just causes them lo loads of questions. Who's lending to you? Where's it coming from? Yeah. Because they've got to trace that money back. You know, they sound like fair enough questions to me. But we're told there's nothing suspicious about this because they've done it before. Is that a system that you've used in the past? That oh, it's yeah. like, yeah. You have to do all sorts of things. Yeah, I see. You, you have to do all sorts of things to make sure you get a sale. But we've seen a number of mortgage documents submitted into the valuation process by Harrison's companies for a number of customers. In each case saying that there are no incentives or deposits offered. But we've also seen customers' bank accounts which show Harrison's company paying roughly the amount of the deposit straight into them. The money might hit the bank accounts after the form's gone in, but it still raises some serious questions. And the lawyers we've spoken to don't think this smells right at all. Why? Because remember that piece of paper in the Tupperware from earlier? Lying to a lender when you're applying to get money from them could be breaking the law, and that kind of sounds like what might be happening here. And that means they could be committing fraud, Harrison, fraud. It's highly likely I need to speak to a Kylie. Like the diminutive pop princess, Harrison's about to be centre stage. Or is he? Because we haven't heard too much of Dad Brendan recently, have we? Well, watch the solo act become a father and son duo and watch us piece it together before it all falls apart. Yes, Kylie me rogue. I can't get him out of my head. Oh, he's on site. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And... We apply for a job with Harrison's company. We get it. And so, guess what? Here he is, Harrison Kiley. Especially for you. Luckily, he loves to talk. And soon he's telling us the golden rules of his business. We recommend all the mortgages. Yeah. To one mortgage broker and the solicitors as well. Especially the solicitors. We recommend one firm. Well, we don't just recommend it, we demand it. Yeah. Like, if you're a buyer buying up us, you, you have to use our solicitors. Otherwise, we just don't want to sell it to you. Because this is what happens when customers use their own people. Another sales rep said to use whichever solicitor you want. Threatening them with all sorts of legal action because they're just absolute idiots and they're just trying to say that we're scamming them and we're not. Right. And that's the key to it, you know, using the right solicitors. And now we come full circle. Harrison is about to reveal what we've suspected all along. 
my dad does all the building. He's he's a building manager, so he goes oh, outside okay. and meets all the tradesmen. You, I'm head of sales. Yes, so okay. My dad's obviously the organ grinder, but <laughs> you wouldn't deal with my dad. So he says the real boss is Dad Brendan Kylie, who we met back in 2012. Well, you know, the initials all over the company are a bit of a giveaway. Since we last saw him, he's been pretty busy. He set up an investment scheme which nearly 500 people paid 9.3 million into to invest in the development and building of new houses. That company collapsed in 2015, resulting in his investors looking likely to have lost out on all of their money. It also meant he was banned from being a company director for 12 months. Maybe that's why his 24-year-old son Harrison is now the listed director of all the family businesses. The Kylies have managed to spin a web of intrigue. Now it's time to unravel it, though, and let them know that we know what they know. We want to pay the Kylies a visit. First up, we head to one of their latest housing developments. They're not there, but many of the residents are, Hello, and they're very keen to speak to me. Even just walking down this little street here, full of houses which are now occupied, um, people have come out of their doors and grabbed me and wanted to tell me what's wrong with their homes and the difficulties they're having uh, trying to make uh, Harrison Kiley and his company put things right. So, we're taking those tales of shoddy workmanship and suspected mortgage fraud to their offices, where I'm hoping to catch up with Harrison himself. And before we can blink, Harrison turns up for work in a nice shiny Merc. But he doesn't stay long. Harrison, where are you going? We need to talk to you. We need to talk to you, Harrison. There we go, that's Harrison Kiley. Came and went without wanting to speak to us. But it won't end there. It doesn't. There's no one in the offices, so I give Harrison one last chance to speak to me. Hello. Hello, is that Harrison? Hello. Hi, Harrison. It's Matt All right, from BBC Rogue Traders. No, Harrison, we need to talk because uh, um, I get the feeling that for Harrison today will be a working from home day. Uh, he doesn't want to talk to us, and there is so much to discuss. Questions like, why is your name on a document that says there are no incentives, and yet we have evidence of the incentive, the gift coming from Harrison's company for that property? It don't make no sense, Harrison. You need to explain, if you can. I suspect you can't. And he still can't. While Harrison says that the companies we featured have never gifted a deposit to a house buyer, given undisclosed cash back, or made false or inaccurate representations to any mortgage lenders, he still won't tell us why his companies have transferred large amounts of money to a number of their buyers. Harrison told us any suspicion of fraud is groundless and that he has hundreds of happy customers, only a handful of disgruntled ones. He insists Dad Brendan is only the site manager on building projects and not involved in running the companies. And while his companies do recommend solicitors and financial advisers, there's no obligation to use them. He disputes what Oliver told us and says he's never caused a client's property to fall into negative equity, pointing out that valuations are down to independent surveyors. As for poor building quality, all properties are signed off by an approved building inspector and the warranty company they use. Gas Safe has never taken action against BAK in relation to boilers and our allegations about planning permission apparently have no substance.